Hi, welcome to How to Sell to Humans. I'm your host, Timothy Bull. I'm an international sales and marketing professional who has helped sign deals with uh, multi billion companies. And um, today I've got a topic that one of my friends sent in. Um, he was asking me about when someone says they have no money, what they often mean is they actually do but do not want to hand it over yet. So I thought today what I would cover is I talked through some. Uh, tips around handling objections around money and where a lot of these things come from. Um, so I'm going to jump into those in just a moment but first of all if you like this video please make sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and like it and I always appreciate your comments. So handling money objections um, money objections are extremely common in sales You'll hear plenty of this sort of things saying, you are too expensive, um, I don't have the budget, and I've also heard something like this as well. My boss says that they have something cheaper, usually something free or something they found on the internet maybe. But these objections themselves are rarely just about the money. And part of your job is understanding where those objections are coming from and handling them correctly. Now. To best handle them, firstly you need to make sure that you're setting the right expectations throughout the sales process with your prospect. What that means is every single step along the way you're making sure that you are identifying their problems, going through all those details, so that when, it, when the objections do come you're able to handle the objection well. So we're going to look a little bit about setting expectations. First of all, you need to make sure that in your sales process with your prospect, you have understand why they're looking to make the decision. What is their reason to change? Why are they looking to do something different? And secondly, you need to make sure that you've covered absolutely everything else you can think of at this stage. Have you covered their pain points? Have you made sure, have they said to you before that they have budget for what you're offering? Are you making sure that you're speaking to the right people? If you're doing all of these elements, have you reached the stage where your prospect agrees that your solution fulfills what they need? In other words, has, have you got to a stage with the group, your, the organisation or person you're speaking with where they say to you, Yes, you, whatever you offer does exactly what we need. And secondly, have they agreed, so not just you thinking nice thoughts, but have they agreed that what you offer is better than anything else on the market? So in other words, it's better than, it's better than them doing nothing, it's better than them trying to solve it themselves, and it's better than them looking for any other third party system. And finally, setting these expectations. Are you at a stage where they need to make a buying decision? In other words, have you gone through everything so that they're happy with what you're offering, they've agreed it's the right thing for them, and now what you're doing is you're going through the final, okay, here's what we need to get the agreement. Sometimes in sales, this is called the um, the split between what we call the sale and the close. I'll probably go into this in another video sometime. But the sale is very much, has the prospect agreed that your solution fulfills what they need better than anything else on the market? And secondly, um, the close is when they've agreed to all that and now you're finalizing the commercial details. So it's a crucial difference between the two. But what I'm trying to get here is, is that have you set those expectations that you will be um, you will be expecting a buying decision? And in fact, have you asked them something on those points? A really great question that I often use is something like, have I shown you enough that you feel like you're in a position to buy? What's great about that question is it allows me to put everything on me. Um, 
So they can say to me, yes, Tim, we've, we've seen everything, we're in a position to buy, or no, Tim, there's some more information I need. And that then allows me to follow up with them. So once you set those expectations, remember first and foremost that objections are not bad. They can be a really, really good buying sign. Often there's the final bit of resistance before buying because people want to make sure they're getting a good deal. They want to make sure that you're putting the effort in and that you care about their business. Um, so there's always that bit of resistance before buying. So don't panic when you get objections, but know how to handle them when they do come up. And also as well, know when it's the right time to walk away to potentially return later and I'll get into that in just a moment. So how then how then do we unpack objection handling? So first of all make sure to thank your prospect when they bring you an objection. This might sound rather counterintuitive you just want them to buy but the very fact they're engaging with you and bringing this to you is, is important what kills deals is indifference or just going silent. The fact they're bringing something to you. Thank you very much for this objection. Really great to hear it. Secondly, clarify what they mean. You know, dear Mr. Mrs. Miss Prospect, um, thank you for sharing that with me. Could you just clarify what you mean by that? Am I right in understanding you mean X, Y, Z? And once you've clarified with them, isolate. In other words, isolate to see if this is the only thing stopping you from coming to a decision. If you remember from the earlier points, we're now looking to be in the in the close rather than the sale. So is there something you've missed out from the sale part of the process? And this then, once you've once you've gone through these, you thank them, you clarified, you isolated. You then talk with them to see if there's anything that can be done and you set steps accordingly. So if they've come to you with a particular objection, then you can say to them, okay, well, what if we do X, Y, Z? Will that get the agreement? And what I would strongly encourage you to do is to prepare possible answers in advance. But of course, please don't be a robot. What I mean by that is that your industry will tend to have a lot of the same objections coming up time and time and time again. Um, so when you're handling them, make sure you've prepared, put thought into them so that you can respond to them. But as always, make sure you're not just simply being a robot repeating the same things over and over again, but rather make sure that you are, um, you are paying attention, you are in the moment when you're talking with the prospect. As an example from outside of the money handling objection, um, I've had experiences where um, I was selling something that wasn't featured in a particular piece of research and it would come up as an objection, why are you not in this piece of research? Now I was able to handle it in a legitimate way because I knew the organisation um, and as a result I was able to just deflect that objection and overcome it. Um, because ultimately it was, it was more, that particular objection was more around, you know, can they trust us to do business with us? rather than we absolutely need them to be on this particular thing. So what we've done now is we've gone through, you've set expectations and you've gone through and said okay here's how we need to handle the, ex the um, objections and in just a moment I'm going to go into a couple of specific uh, money handling objections. Okay so we're now moving into a couple of examples of how to handle some uh, objections around money. So one of the core ones I've heard time and time again is an objection around budget. Uh, typically this falls into something like, uh, we have no budget. So as always, when you get any such, ex any, such, any such objection, say thank you, you clarify what they mean, and you isolate. Now, What's also quite useful at this point is if you've gone through the sales process and they agree that you know, fulfill everything they need, they've, they've, you, you fulfill it better than anything else in the market, if they are genuinely throwing a budget question to you, 
ask for things like their budget cycle. Um, sometimes you might be talking with the organisation, they really like what you have to offer, but their budget cycle itself is pushing things back. So in other words, um, it may well be that they've been denied budget for the moment, for the time being, but their next cycle could be three, six months. When you get such objections, you may potentially need to put the discussions on hold and then revisit next budget cycle. Um, if this is actually what's going on, if there's nothing else that can be done um, and you've done everything else, then this, then you might potentially have to do that. And sometimes when it comes to budget, you need to be prepared to walk away. And I'll cover this a little bit more in just a moment. Um, but I've had examples in the past where I was dealing with um, one organisation in central London and I think they really liked, liked, liked what we had to offer. Um, we were shortlisted and then the last moment they, my main contact there, she contacted me and said, really sorry Tim, they've pulled our budget. So it, it does happen. Sometimes these objections are real and sometimes they're things that can't be done. But it's important to consider things like the budget cycle so that when the next cycle comes along you're in a strong position you know just make sure you are engaging with them if they say come back to us in three months contact them in a couple of months and see what's happening you want to be front of mind so when these things do come up again you are there another very common objection is you're too expensive um, such as this amazing uh, Ferrari interior there typically this is going to come across something like your solution is too expensive or your competitor is far cheaper. Now whenever these come up first of all make sure to thank your prospect for this objection thank you so much for this objection <laughs> as counterintuitive as that sounds clarify what do you mean by you're too expensive what do you mean by we're too expensive and then isolate. Now when you get the too expensive question, this is typically more to do with their perception of the value of what you offer than simply just the money alone. And I'll probably go into value and stuff like that in a later video. But what we're talking about here is that if they're perceiving that what you ha what you offer um, is is a far higher value to them than the money they will have the money and time they'll have to put into it, then they will buy. If, they're, if you've gone through the sale and you're now at the close and they throw this too expensive at you, it might also be worthwhile revisiting what they value and how you fulfill that. In other words, if you've gone through the sale and they've said, yes, you fulfill what we need and um, you do it better than anyone else in the market, then it may well be that they're missing just a final piece in order to get this across the line. One word of warning, I would say don't rush into discounting. Have confidence in what you offer. If they've gone through all this and said, um, you know, well, we think we think you you fit what we need. Um, you do it better than us in the market. And now they're throwing the the expense objection at you. Don't panic. Take it one step at a time. Sometimes what I've done in the past is if we put together like a list of a list of things including some of the things they've said are more nice to have. If they're looking for it to be cheaper, sometimes what I've done is in that package, I've taken out what they've considered to be the more nice to have, kept the must have things in there, and we've got it across the line that way. Now, following those two examples, one of the toughest things in sales is knowing when to walk away from, a, from an opportunity. And it really sucks as a salesperson um, but sometimes you do need to walk away sometimes for your insanity as much as anything else and sometimes you need to know when to return such as the budget cycle I mentioned a few minutes ago and when it comes to that cycle um, you've got to be in a position where you're front of their mind so maybe if, as I mentioned earlier on, they said their budget cycle, the next one's in like three, four months, get in contact with them, regularly touch base with them. Um, you know, do it, in a, do it in a proper professional way, you know, being very clear that you've gone through all this, they've said that what you offer 
fulfills what they need and is better than anything else in the market and keep in, keep in contact with them. Another really key thing about walking away is pipeline will always be king. What kills sales, well not literally kills salespeople, but what burns up a lot of salespeople is they focus on just one or two opportunities. And it may be that there are the most amazing opportunities ever, but things fall apart. Budgets get taken away. Um, people leave. A new CEO can come in who decides to do a clean sweep of everything. Pipeline will always be king in that regard. What I mean by that is that it will always be in a situation where um, you need to have enough in your pipe so that if one or two things you need to walk away due to budget being pulled, something like that, you can do so. So, in summary today, make sure when, you're, when it comes to handling objections, make sure that you're, you prepare throughout. So you prepare a list of potential objections and also as well you're running your sales process correctly so that by the time those objections probably come up they've agreed with you that what you have to offer fulfills their need and also um, does it better than the, anything else on the market. Whenever you get any objections money or otherwise make sure to first of all thank the organ thank the thank your prospect thank you so much for bringing this to my attention because they're engaging with you secondly clarify make sure you understand what their objections are so you're not just hearing one thing and, and it not being very clear and thirdly make sure you isolate that objection so whatever it is they're being extremely clear you know so is this the only thing especially with money objections it's usually not just about the money so it could be something like budget cycle or it could be something like the value they perceive in what you have to offer know when to walk away and when to return so know sometimes when it's when you need to just step back focus on other opportunities and then return to this later perhaps and as always pipeline is king Make sure that you have other opportunities coming through the pipe, other opportunities coming to you and you're working through that first of all process of them saying what you offer is better than anything else and you do it better, you know, you fulfill everything we need. So those are a few steps around objection handling on money objections. Thank you so much for watching this episode of How to Sell to Humans. Um, if there's anything you've seen today you want to comment on, please do put your comments in below. Um, otherwise, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe, hit the notifications bell and like for future videos. Thank you very much for watching and happy selling.